Merci. Todd Shea. Good afternoon. Bonjour to those colleagues who are able to join us with our special lecture today. Let me begin as is appropriate, as is required, with acknowledging that the University of Regina is situated on the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan traditional territory, also predominantly on Treaty 4 with a presence in Treaty 6. Treaty 4 territory is the home of the Cree, the Soto, the Assiniboine, the Lakota, Nakota, Dakota Nations. And as a dean of a faculty and as a human being, for me to reaffirm my commitments to my Indigenous relatives, to all of my relatives, to try to work in ways that are respectful, that honor the lives, the histories, and the lands, and to also give deep appreciation for being allowed to make Regina my home and be able to work uh, on these lands and territories. I'm very excited to introduce our special guest, Dr. Stefano Claudio Sotarello from the Universidad Iberoamericana in Mexico City. Dr. Sotarello has a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from the Universidad degli Studi de Milan. He also has a master's degree in social anthropology from Centro de Investigación y Estudios Superior on Anthropologia Social in Mexico City and a PhD in education from Universidad Iberoamericana in Mexico City, his current home university. He has a postdoctoral, he had a postdoctoral stay at CISADF in 2015, sponsored by the Mexican National Council of Science and Technology. He's also a tier one member of the Mexican National System of Researchers. And since 2019, he's been the director of the Institute of Research and Development of Education at Iberoamericana in Mexico City, where since 2015, he's been the lead researcher in the project, Educate for a Critical and Decolonized interculturality. From 2004 to 2007, he served as an advisor to the general coordination of intercultural and bilingual education with the Mexican Ministry of Public Education. And as if he isn't busy enough, he's also a full-time professor and a researcher at the Universidad Intercultural Chiapas. Dr. Sartorello's research interests include interculturality, education, native pedagogy, teacher training, and the development of educational materials with an intercultural approach, as well as emergent epistemologies, the production of intercultural knowledge and the horizontal collaborative methodologies. I will let everyone know that this Zoom presentation is being recorded, and I will ask your indulgence uh, for questions uh, to be held to the last 20 minutes, uh, Dr. Sotorello uh, is going to take us through a bit of a journey of his work, his commitments, his research as part of what the faculty is engaged in, which is a knowledge exchange and understanding North and South. And so I am going to uh, turn off my screen share, close my screen, mute myself, and enjoy um, the next 30 minutes or so. So welcome, Stefano. It is with tremendous pleasure uh, that we welcome you here to the University of Virginia and the Faculty of Education and turn over um, all of the screen and the Zoom opportunity to you. Here I am. Thank you, uh, Jerome, for uh, the presentation. And first of all, I want to thank you for the invitation and also to the Faculty of Education of Regina University. It's a pleasure for me 
to share the actual research experience that I will uh, uh, present uh, uh, below. Uh, it's important for me to say that is the, today is the first part of an exchange between us that will continue on next Monday, 25 of January, with the presentation of Jerome and Melanie at the Ibero University that uh, uh, you can see in uh, my presentation in a while. I also want to thank Sonia Fernandez, uh, Director of Academic Cooperation of Ibero University, who led uh, this meeting by introducing me to Jerome uh, during uh, his uh, last visit to Mes Mexico. She will be the culprit of the research project that Jerome and his team and Inida and I will develop in next years about intercultural education with the indigenous organization with which we collaborate. Thank also to Montserrat, who always helps us in our intercultural and interlinguistic communication. Thanks to you so much, Montserrat. Finally, uh, please apologize for my English because it has been too long since I present a speech in my third language, but I sincerely hope that with the support of the PowerPoint picture, you will understand uh, me. So let me uh, please, uh, okay. Okay, I, I think that all you are uh, seeing the uh, picture uh, of my PowerPoint. Please, uh, if you can tell me uh, if you are seeing it. No, uh, we, we are watching the poster of Jerome's presentation. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, of course. It's the first picture. Thank you so much, Monsa. Ah, Thank great. you. Yes, it's the first picture because uh, uh, as I see, as I tell you, uh, this is the first, uh, the, the, the first meeting uh, and uh, we have the, uh, the presentation of Melanie and Jerome on, on Monday 25 in Ibero University. And uh, so for me, it's very important that, uh, uh, that you can participate also in this uh, very, very important conference. Uh, I will uh, uh, I will talk about uh, uh, an educational process that we call milpas educativas, educational cornfields, uh, educational milpas, uh, which is about social natural frameworks for good living or well-being, as, as you want. Uh, uh, it's important for me to tell you that. Uh, 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 this is not uh, an educational process uh, uh, that Stefano makes alone. No, uh, we are a network. We are a, a, a very uh, um, great network integrated uh, uh, from several person and indigenous organization uh, and we call REDIN, Inductive Intercultural Education Network. So, uh, it's very important for me to explain uh, our locus of initiation and to explain who we are and what is our background. Uh, first of all, for me, it's uh, very important to present to you our precursor, our teachers. As you can see in this picture, uh, Maria Bertelli, Jorge Gachet, and Rosana Podesta are three academics people that uh, uh, were our teacher, the precursors of this process, process uh, uh, educational uh, project and processes. Uh, it's, uh, it's important for me to tell you that uh, uh, Maria, Jorge and Rosana died last year. Jorge and Maria in uh, the past year and Rosana before so we have a, a very important, important uh, compromise with, uh, with them and uh, with the, the uh, formation they, they, they gave to us. Uh, we also, I also have to, uh, 
to present you the real protagonists of uh, Milpas Educativa, the Milperas and Milperos, a term by which uh, I, 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 I will refer to teachers, indigenous teachers, community members and children that are the real protagonists, the real important protagonists of Milpas Educativa. Uh, without them, our educational processes and our project will not, uh, won't exist. Uh, acad academic people like me only uh, make a small part in this process. But the, the, the great part of, of, of all the project uh, is due to them. So it's very, very important for us to underline the, the, uh, the importance of indigenous children, indigenous teacher, community members that join with us this project. Uh, I also need to um, explain that we have a, 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 a very uh, large background in our project that began in 1994 with the Zapatista Army of National Liberation Uprising in Chiapas, Mexico. You, you, you know about this process, but for us this process is very important because uh, it detone the creation of the UNEM, the Union of Teachers of the New Education for Mexico, which is a group of indigenous uh, Maya teachers that join together to change education, to change intercultural education that the government give to them, to their children. This union start to collaborate with CSA and with Maria Bertelli and Jorge Gachet and uh, start to develop uh, educational processes in, in order to uh, to have a better intercultural education. I get involved in this project in 2004 and I still working with them and, and, and now with the absence of Maria, Jorge, Rosana, there are a new generation of academics that collaborate with this union and we work together with them with uh, a lot of respect, collaboration, uh, and uh, um, careful uh, of the of the importance that communities that uh, sustain the the, the name and the redeem uh, is is the real center of our our work. Uh, in this period, uh, we have uh, elaborated uh, several uh, educational materials. Uh, we, we, we brought uh, together with our indigenous collaborators uh, a curricular model. Uh, we, 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 we work together to uh, elaborate uh, uh, educational material and several processes. So when I talk to you uh, about Milpa Educativa project, I talk like uh, a member of a, of, of a big uh, team and uh, with uh, this background. So for me, it was important to introduce my presentation with this uh, uh, background. Uh, in this map, in this map of Mexico, you can uh, see the location of 28 milpas educativas in uh, uh, the Mexican uh, state. You can see uh, that uh, we have several milpas educativa in Chiapas. In, uh, we have a milpas educativa in Puebla state, uh, which are those uh, states of Mexican Federation in which we have uh, several milpas educativas. But we also work with Milpas Educativa in Oaxaca, and we also work in Michoacan. Uh, so it's a project that uh, go across Mexico's uh, country and involves several indigenous uh, uh, groups. 
um, it's very, very necessary for me to uh, underline that uh, uh, indigenous territories uh, uh, are affected by several structural changes and multiple violence. Uh, in particular, during the project I'm, I'm gonna tell you, uh, all those regions were affected by femicides, organized crime, drug trafficking, militarization, agro-industry, mining, poultry industry, immigration, farming, economic crisis. It's a very complicated situation that affects social natural framework or of communities. Uh, we also had a very a very complicated situation with the uh, federal government of Mexico trying to impose its rectory over teachers' unions and public education, which detone a, a conflict uh, that go across all the country and complicate a lot situation uh, for us, uh, which are working with teachers, with the school, with the people involved in educational processes. And I also need to uh, tell you that in Mexico, uh, public education, it's not longer a factor of social mo mobility. Uh, in particular, indigenous public education, indigenous education that government improve, um, it's, uh, it, it's a real uh, 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 limited education, um, a poor education. And so several indigenous organizations uh, are looking for uh, building uh, other forms of educate their children, to develop their younger peoples, to have uh, other, other kind of education that uh, uh, fulfill their political, educational, and epistemological uh, projects. This is very important uh, that uh, we uh, understand uh, this context. That's why uh, for us, the focus of the uh, educational milpas is not the school curriculum, but the community one. Uh, as Maria Bertelli always said, always uh, told, the school, the school instruct while the community educates. We, 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 there, there is a, a very great difference between instructing and educating. We, 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 we want to, to work uh, with schools, with uh, communities that educate in a very big uh, sense uh, childhood. That's why in the middle pass, educational processes are generated to strengthen community such a natural framework for good living or for well-being. So educational processes emphasize the social, political, human, territorial, and spiritual tissue of communities members. Educational processes in the middle past focus on human, natural, and spiritual relationship, which as a whole as an holistic and interconnected social natural network make up uh, uh, the common, make up the community. Uh, our pedagogy is oriented by the inductive intercultural method that uh, Jorge Gachet uh, designed in uh, his uh, experience in the Brazilian Amazon in the 80s of the past century in collaboration with indigenous organization of Brazil. This is very important. We always work in collaboration with. Never is an academic that lead the process. No, we, we also are part of the process. So uh, inductive intercultural method is a critical and decolonizing approach to intercultural education. And uh, in particular, our approach critics neoliberal and neo-indigenous conceptions that refers about respect, 
tolerance and horizontal dialogue, but hides the social, political, epistemological, and educational asymmetries and the relationship of domination submission between national society and indigenous society. For us, it's very important to underline this uh, conception of intercultural education. So for us, uh, intercultural education is conceived and based on the intersocietal conflict, the conflict between neoliberal capitalist system and indigenous way of life. That's why we point for education for a good life in the community social natural territory. As you can see in, one, in this picture, uh, I will explain uh, before uh, what it represents, but it represents uh, the territory of an indigenous community, which is the base of our education. So our, our, uh, our educational processes are based on four mainstays, political, philosophical, epistemological, and pedagogical pillars. In this picture, you can see uh, an image uh, that are from Celtal cosmology, uh, from Cosmovision, in which there are four chargers that charge word. And this is our pillars. I, I, I will talk about this pillar uh, uh, specifically. Uh, I will start with the pedagogical one. Uh, we, we think that unlike Western knowledge that is systematized in books, manual, internet, indigenous knowledge tends to be predominantly oral and experiential and is guarded in the community's historical memory and experiences of the inhabitants of the community. So educational processes carried out in, in the Milpas are based on a praxeological pedagogy that recognize that the sources of indigenous knowledge for intercultural education are found in the social, productive, agricultural, ritual activities that the community members carry out in the community territory according to the social natural calendar of the community. This is one example of the social natural uh, calendar of one community. For us, this calendar is the epistemic matrix of indigenous knowledge. Every community in which we work has its own social natural calendar, depending on the territory, depending on the culture, depending on the way of life of this specific community. Uh, we, uh, let's talk uh, about the epistemological pillar, uh, very related to, to what I am uh, uh, saying. Epistemological pillar refers to the other rationality, or let's say to indigenous rationalities, rationalities, please, in, in plural, not singular from which indigenous people understand the world and generate knowledge. Despite the growing penetration of the dominant socioeconomic model, Mexican rural indigenous society are characterized by maintaining and claiming a deep integration between society, nature, and spiritual. Life in this community develops in deep interaction with modern art, conceived as a living being and of which human beings are a part, are not the owners, are part of. So through this pillar, we thus claim an ecology of knowledge, like Boventura de Sousa, uh, uh, with, with the expression of Boventura de Sousa, in which the absence produced by Western modernity are contrasted and the emergency of indigenous knowledge system 
are alike. We 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 have also uh, we, we give also uh, a great importance to the political pillar, which refers to the struggles carried out by the indigenous organization to defend social, political, economical, educational rights embodied in the Convention 169 of the International Labor Organization, and to recognize the unfulfilled San, Agreed Accord, San Andres Accords sorry, between Eseta Elene and Mexican government. This political pillar expressed the incessant and continuous struggle to achieve the transformation of the unjust and asymmetric relation of domination submission of the majority Western mestizo society towards indig indigenous society. We look forward to build a world where many worlds fit and making reality the Zapatista motto of never again a Mexico without us. Nunca jamás un México sin nosotros. And the last pillar we work is the philosophical one. It refers to the positive values enforced in contemporary indigenous society, such as society, nature, spiritual integration as a whole, work, respect, agreement, community work, the consensus of the assembly. Those values as a whole define the social horizon of good living well-being. So when we talk about good living, when we talk about well-being, uh, for us, it's not a fashion or speech. We do not pretend also to essentialize or idealize indigenous cultures and worldviews. No, for us, well-being is built in and from the real life of indigenous people in their community territory. That's why social natural calendar is so important for our pedagogy. It is precisely the social productive ritual healing activities that are carried out in the community to face real life and real problems that constitute the concrete substantive basic of living, good and bad. Well, being so is not something static or predefined, but it's the result of the process of life itself. It is a social and historic construction. And in particularly from the Rodin point of view, good living is conceived as a societal and political project that although it cannot regardless of capital, goes beyond it, subordinating the economic dimension to the spiritual, environmental and community sociality. This is very important for us. So, uh, for us, it's very important to work uh, uh, to develop educational process about social natural networks. And one tool we have is living maps. Here, can you, here you can see two living maps, one of the Tzotzil community of Caquete, Sinacantan, in Chiapas, uh, indigenous people from Tzotzil language, and uh, uh, another one, a uh, living map of the Corpus Christi Festival in the Purepucha Autonomous Community of Cheram in Michoacan. We have another, we have several uh, living maps. Uh, this is another one made by girls and boy community members and teachers in the, net, in the Nahuatl community of Opaco in Puebla. Uh, for us, uh, living map is a very important educational tool in order to do what? In order to uh, deconstruct and reconstruct community social natural frameworks. For us, uh, uh, Living Maps served as an educational resource to explore and analyze community social natural frameworks, as uh, one of our Milperas say. The premise was to understand the local, social, and political framework 
as we designed the map, we recreated the concept of territory, which is, it, which is not only a geographic space, but a set of relationships. So with a living map, uh, we do a contextualized cartography that emphasize key elements, values, and processes that make up the territory of indigenous locality and that give an account of the community spiritual social natural frameworks that support the societal project of good living. This is how, for example, Milperos of Cheran refer to their living maps. They, they say, the festival, the Corpus Christi festival, has on the one hand a symbolic dimension for the community because it is a part of its own history and collective identity. On the other, an, ento an ontological dimension that is manifested in the deep integration, society, nature, spirituality, that reaffirms and strengthens values typical of Purepecha society. But uh, for us, uh, it was very important not only to deconstruct and reconstruct social natural framework, but also to desensialize and problematize life in Indian community, in indigenous communities. At Milpa Educativa's project, we have managed to desensialize the concept of indigenous territory and to problematize the community social natural framework. Thus, in living maps, environmental, political, religious, economic problems are shown accounting for the conflicts and threats that cross the territories and the framework itself. As our Milperas say, it is important not to idealize or essentialize the relationship with the territory, but rather to discuss and point out the different conflicts, articulation and threats that transform it and that change the life experience. For example, here, we, here you have a list of treats to community well-beings that emerge for, from uh, living maps. For example, illegal logging and drug trafficking in the Meseta Prefecture, intra or intercommunity conflict between affiliates of various political parties, mining, agro industrial and poultry companies that monopolize the mineral and hydroecological sources of community territory in Puebla, but also other factors that are uh, from uh, people of, this, of the community, for example, a neighbor fumigating his coffee plantation with the spray pump full of the pesticide that Sagarpa uh, government has given him, and that the wind also spread towards the organic coffee plantation of his compadre, killing his bees, or the cantina located at the edge of the town in which community men go to waste money from federal pro program. So it's very important that with, the, with a living map, people can understand uh, how uh, well-being is treated by uh, community people and, uh, and, and by uh, uh, multinational, uh, by the government, but also by themselves too. So I, I, I am ending my presentation. Milpas Educativas, weaving critical social natural frameworks for good living. In Milpas Educativa, we try to collectively analyze life in the community territory. And we try to promote social practices that strengthen community good life, raising awareness among children and other community members to avoid practices that deteriorate social natural community framework. The living map is one of our educational tools that generate educational process to contribute indigenous people to weave social natural frameworks under its own societal horizon of good living. Uh, 
We keep work, working and learning. It's a very large uh, work we have to do. Uh, we can, you, you, can, you can know uh, more about this project. In this book, uh, we uh, wrote all together the 88 people collaborating in this project. Uh, it's uh, free at this uh, link you can see in the page of Inide Ivero. Uh, here you have uh, all the orders of this uh, educational material. And let me uh, end with this image. Uh, is a is an historical image. Is a picture that I I took 15 years. Uh, uh, yes, in the, in, the, in the very beginning of my collaboration with, uh, with this organization, where I was working uh, in a milpa, and I, and I stop and I see this incredible uh, representation of uh, the link between uh, society, nature, spirituality, that in this social uh, community is represented by uh, this image. And it is, this was the, the, the first idea of Milpas Educativa that uh, I, I began to imagine, but uh, we construct all together in uh, uh, collaboration. Thank you so much uh, for listening, and I hope uh, I, uh, I, I, I can show you, I could show you the the, the general idea of our uh, project and of our conception of intercultural education. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias, Stefano. That was uh, brilliant. And uh, I consider myself fortunate, uh, as I am sure others on the Zoom call, uh, to at least be oriented um, and to raise our awareness to the important work. In terms of functionality, uh, what I'm going to ask um, people who are on the call to do is if they have questions, uh, to put them in the Q&A. I already see you're getting congratulations from uh, some of the folks who have joined us. We are fortunate to have a uh, colleague, uh, Montserrat Munoz David, uh, on uh, the panel with us. Uh, Montserrat works uh, with the University of Virginia International and will help translate where necessary, either from Spanish, well, not from, Sp well, Spanish, Stefano can deal with, you know, in terms of if the questions come up and once it can help me uh, and where we need in English. But we've left open about 20 minutes. I want to leave a couple of minutes at the end um, to bring some closing remarks. But if people uh, have questions, queries, um, please place them in the Q&A and I'll do my best to moderate it. So from Dr. Melanie Bryce Stefano, uh, who created the living maps? Was it an individual or collaboration? Was it community or researchers? Uh, I will say from the very first time you shared the book with me, I actually have it sitting here, I keep it at home. Uh, I've been absolutely amazed um, with the imagery that you, uh, that you have. So I think, um, you know, to Melanie's question about the living maps, uh, the artists and authors, how you got to put together. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Living Map, uh, it's an old tool, uh, educational tool that, were, that was uh, uh, developed uh, in the, I think in the 70s uh, of the past century. It, uh, it is inspired by uh, Paulo Freire pedagogy and uh, the, uh, the, the work that the social uh, um, and uh, um, community uh, educator, educator did uh, in, 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 in several rural and uh, indigenous community in the past. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we, um, we use this tool because it's, it's very, it's very, um, it's a very good tool to, to work with children 
to work with community members and to work with teachers. Uh, they usually, uh, mm, we, don't, we do not work in school, we, we work outside school. So people go and know the territory of the community in order to uh, identify social, cultural, spiritual, productive activities that are relevant for education. So they go with children to this, to, to do, to participate in uh, uh, cutting coffee or to uh, walking with, uh, or to fish in the river or to uh, go to see the organic bees of one of the community members. And teachers uh, develop uh, education situation uh, from these activities. So uh, it's uh, um, children and teachers and community members that accompany this process uh, know very well the territory of the community. And so we think, oh yes, they could draw these uh, maps. They, 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 they can, they can uh, draw maps uh, in which they represent their territory and the activities uh, that are relevant for them. So a living map is, uh, is product by children, teachers and uh, and uh, community members that collaborate together in our uh, in uh, educational processes that are made in uh, Milpa Educative. Uh, I hope uh, I could uh, understand, uh, contest, uh, answer the, the question. Muchas gracias, Stefano. I think you I think you did answer it, and um, wonderfully so. Um, there's a question that came up uh, asking. Um, you know what's the next step to continue this work? Um, I will. I'll be. I'll start it, but then I would like you to respond. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful uh, to Montserrat, uh, to Montserrat, uh, and to uh, Stefano and colleagues at Ibero Americano. About a, about 11 months ago, um, I had the good fortune of going down and meeting Stefano and some of his colleagues. Stefano and I got to know each other briefly, but I think we had, we understood the connection between the work that's possible uh, for us as individual scholars, but also uh, as faculty members and, and colleagues to larger organizations. Um, one of the things that I hope in terms of our faculty of education is through our faculty-based research center, Dr. Andrew Sturzik, who is now the director, to foster and develop increased relationships with Stefano and his colleagues at uh, Ibero-Americana to develop uh, extensions and, and deeper projects like this where we work in collaboration and out of responsiveness to our indigenous communities uh, to build a north-south partnership um, and a better understanding uh, in terms of knowledge exchanges for indigenous peoples primarily but for those of us who support the hopes and aspirations of indigenous colleagues to open that up uh, also so um, for us at the faculty this is the beginning um, of relationships where we learn uh, from colleagues who work uh, in and in support of indigenous communities elsewhere. Stefano, but I will ask you to answer it properly. No, no, thank you, Jerome. It's very important uh, uh, to, to, to underline the, the, the collaboration that we are organizing. It's very, very interesting. And I think that we can uh, do in the future several things together. Uh, now, uh, Milpas Educativa is continuing, uh, is not finished. Uh, we, we, uh, our project uh, was uh, uh, end uh, in uh, at the final of the last year, but uh, <laughs> pro educational processes uh, could not finish when a project finished. Uh, we're still working, and now we are facing the problems of education with the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, uh, with the with, with the problem of the uh, of the the pandemic in Mexico and in, in, in uh, indigenous community. So we now we are working with with a small uh, but important uh, financiation of our university to continue to develop uh, uh, educational processes that face 
the problems that uh, are now uh, affecting communities uh, um, um, caused uh, by uh, pandemia uh, of COVID-19. Uh, so, so, so uh, we really never stop. We, we really never stop. We, we, we always, we always are doing. Uh, 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 educational process with our collaboration collaborators and I think that it's our small secret. Uh, we have a group of people, a network that we try to always work together and uh, we are friends. We are uh, we enjoy uh, time uh, uh, together and we know that uh, I learn a lot from them. They learn something from me. And our collaboration make our lives better. So uh, sometimes we have a financiation, a good financiation, like uh, uh, Kellogg's uh, financiation that they give us to 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 to, to make Milpas Educativa. But sometimes we don't, we not, we do, we do not have money. But it's not important. We still work because we have several problems to face. So uh, no. That's that's my answer. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Perfect. There's three questions. I'll see if we have time to get to uh, these last three questions. Uh, I'll and uh, I'll do my best. Um, could you please speak a bit more about the idea of and it's placed in quotation marks, good living and well-being, uh, and how it was conceptualized, and how it does align with the values of indigenous communities, in particular the ones. Uh, that were involved in this initiative? Hey, it's a very good question. And I'm not the best to answer it because uh, I, I'm a Western uh, man and a white Western man formed in the traditional academy, formed in Eurocentrism, formed in uh, disciplinary uh, disciplines. So it's very difficult for me to understand what uh, well-being, uh, good living is from an indigenous conception. I can, uh, in this year, I understand some things. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, the idea of community, the idea of uh, uh, link with uh, spiritual and natural, uh, uh, living uh, beings, it's very important. I, I, I understand that well-being uh, is not uh, uh, is not refers uh, not does not refer sorry uh, only to uh, um, a static conception of uh, indigenous way of life that belong to the past. No, no, no. Uh, I understand that uh, for actual indigenous organization, uh, well-being or good life is a project, a social natural project for future. They are very, uh, mm, they know that uh, their territories are changing. They know that their lives are changing, but they want to change being themselves, not to, uh, uh, forget their roots, their uh, identities. So th th they are very, very dynamic societies, always changing and adapting and transforming, but they want to transform, preserving their uh, identities. That's what I can understand, but I'm not the best to explain people what this concept refers. Um, Gracias, Stefano. I think again, um, um, perfect answer. Um, are you able to give some examples uh, of aspects you problematized in community relations? Can you repeat, please? Mm -hmm. Are you able to give some examples of aspects that you problematized in community relations. 
yes, of course. Uh, um, I was talking uh, uh, about, for example, the problem of uh, uh, alcoholism, a very, a, a very great problem that affects community. Because uh, 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 in all indigenous communities in which we work, uh, alcoholism is, is, is present. It's very, very complicated to, uh, to face. And with alcoholism, uh, there is a, a gender discrimination. There is a, a depending from uh, money that government give with social programs. There are several problematic situation that are produced both from inside and outside the community. And indigenous people in, um, understand very well those problems and they know how uh, those problems are generated from outside but also from inside. And so they, they want uh, people that work with us are trying. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, uh, scope to, 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 um, to resolve these problems from uh, their conception of life, their form to understand uh, why it's important that men and women uh, join together like a family and build together well-being for the family. Um, nowadays, in, 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 this, uh, in, this, uh, in our present, uh, we, we cannot uh, uh, imagine that uh, uh, community uh, territories are uh, ideal communities. No, 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 no. Uh, but they have, uh, they, they tell us that they can uh, face these problems uh, from their conception, not from our conception. And, and this is very important for us. Gracias, Stefano. Uh, what will I think be the last question just in terms of time? And with uh, apologies to Amanda that I can't probably get the whole question answered, uh, I'll give the first part. Uh, can you elaborate a bit more on the epistemic presuppositions of the project? How are they premised being built? Uh, that is, how is knowledge validated on its own ontological foundation in order to open up dialogue? That's why I think this will be the last big question. That's like a doctoral dissertation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not so easy, but uh, I will try to answer with an example. Uh, some years ago, I, 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 I went to a Chol community in the Chiapas Islands, and uh, I was uh, uh, exploring uh, uh, part of the territory with one of our collaborate, uh, uh, with one of the UNEM collaborators, a Chol uh, man, very, 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 very uh, uh, interesting uh, person. And uh, we, we was exploring uh, a, a milpa, uh, cornfields, uh, to, 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 in order to prepare the uh, educational process we, we will uh, do next day. Always we go, see, look, understand, try to identify what children can understand, can learn in the natural space. We, don't, we do not improvise, we do not uh, uh, make uh, things uh, uh, so. Okay, um, we were talking about uh, uh, knowledge uh, and uh, knowledge uh, uh, in general. And uh, Francisco, tell me, 
about the wind. He 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 say me, uh, can you hear the the wind? <laughs> no, Francisco, no, no, no. Yes, mm, but uh, what kind of wind is? <laughs> I don't know, Francisco. Really, uh, no. Look, this wind come from west. Uh, I can't remember exactly from where, but come from west. And uh, it's a humid wind. So uh, it's probably that tomorrow uh, this educational uh, setting will change because tomorrow will, will rain. So we have to uh, think to think that uh, we have to adapt our pedagogy to changing of territory. This reflect uh, an epistem uh, an epistemology because because for Francisco nature is talking to him nature was telling him that in order to make his pedagogy better, he has to keep in mind that nature is changing. And so it's not uh, a controlled uh, school uh, in which we can do, uh, <laughs> we can reproduce some process that uh, is descontextualized. No, 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 no. We have to, to work in a context in which nature is a source of knowledge. For him, not for me, because I was totally ignorant. Like Maria Bertelli uh, always told us, we are um, uh, territorially analphabets. We are near ignorance of the alphabets of nature. But for indigenous culture and for indigenous pedagogy, it's, a, it's fundamental. It's too important. I hope I could uh, do a, a little example. Gracias, muchas gracias, Stefano. Um, as we close out this, session. Uh, let me say merci, Makowicz. Merci. Thank you, Stefano, for joining us to the, to the people who participated. Thank you. Um, it's much appreciated. Um, as Stefano pointed out, uh, my amazingly talented, insightful colleague, Dr. Melanie Bryce, and then me, uh, will be presenting to our colleagues my hope uh, as a dean of a faculty is to continue to develop a very positive relationship uh, focused on absolutely uh, faculty knowledge exchange, mobilization for graduate students, um, you know, knowledge exchange, mobilization. Um, we're fortunate to have Stefano uh, and his team in terms of, um, you know, a willingness to work with us we're fortunate to have partners at the University of Virginia International, like Monse and her colleagues. Um, I look forward to this relationship as a faculty. Um, we're committed to learning from our indigenous colleagues, um, you know, for those of us inclined, our indigenous relatives. Uh, and I think there's much to be learned um, when we look north to south also, beyond just our local lands and territories. Um, and I look forward to this, Stefano. So, muchas gracias. I really do appreciate it. I look forward to and uh, to Angela Leader. Thank you for all of her support. Muchas gracias, Stefano. Take care of yourself, and I will see you again on Monday. Thank you.